Okay, welcome to the first part of this Phoenix walkthrough. Um, unfortunately, I had to shorten a lot of the parts of the video because it became really long and a lot of it was blabbering, so it was not, Im not important stuff. Of course, I left the few interesting parts um, running on real time, but I hope you enjoy and let's begin. Okay, so let's see if this is going to work properly. Uh, it's the first time that I set up this kind of thing. Um, hopefully the sound will be okay. My fan is turned on, so it's pretty hard to work without it, without the fan. So I'm really sorry about that, but it's impossible to work without the fan here. It's pretty hot. This is actually a Phoenix design that I made for a website called Clangheart. For any of those who don't know my work um, from Tumblr, which is where I have been posting all of these creatures. I'm not sure if you guys like this kind of slower videos or you like my more speedy ones when there where there's just like music and nothing else going on besides the illustration being made. The inspiration for this head, um, as some of you might know, is a bearded bolter. But since I didn't want it to look exactly like a bearded bolter, because that's not fun, um, I tweaked a lot of parts of his design. I need to keep switching from grey to white to make sure that I have pure color points because otherwise it's going to look super muddy when the website gener generator um, creates the pet. I 
I don't like working with a selection, but if I don't do this, it looks super muddy. And I need to make sure that my shapes are working. Another part that I don't like about multiply layers is that I cannot go back and smooth the same way that I would do it on a simple grayscale picture because since this has opacity it's just going to um, add the color on top and it's going to be pretty annoying to fix it later because it just keeps getting muddy and muddy muddy and muddier I guess Another thing that I could do is just like work gray scales um, completely and, um, and then go to paint tool side because I really like the luminescence to transparency mode um, which makes all my blacks um, if it's not pure black they get transparent but in a very clean way and I really like doing that for my line art stuff, my traditional line art stuff The reason why I stare at the picture for so long is because I need to constantly stop and check if it's working or not or what needs to be modified. Um, for much simpler designs it's not so necessary. Like when I was working on the um, cat because they didn't have as much details as this one but it still helps it also helps uh, when you're drawing if you flip the canvas so you notice if any part of the drawing is weird sometimes if you're not careful enough you're going to end up with really weird looking animals um, not, un not only animals of course we really weird looking drawings that just have like a side um, one side balance and if you flip them they're just going to look completely wrong
The sky is super dark, so it's probably going to rain today, and I might have to cut short the video. So this is the real size that, I, that the picture is going to um, be at. And I usually don't work too, too much bigger than the size that it's going to be unless I want to make very nice details. Um, but I must be careful with that because they can disappear um, the smaller the drawing is. Um, but this time I'm making them this large um, just in case there's a an art book printed for the Kickstarter so people can look at the full size details and stuff of each of their creatures. Remember to save your files each three seconds because you never know when the light is going to go out. At least now Photoshop has this um, mode that if the light goes off, Photoshop saves up to a point. So you, if you have the Creative Cloud, you at least don't lose too much work. And I'm pretty happy that they open like monthly memberships for the programs because that's the first time that I was able to get the original Photoshop. It was pretty expensive for a starting art artist and now now it's really affordable for a lot of people. I'm also paying for the Adobe Premiere program, which is what I use to do my video edits. I actually learned how to edit my videos with Sony Vegas. I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but um, since that program was much more expensive. I decided to try and learn Adobe Premiere and it has worked out marvelously. It has all the tools that I need and um ah. it has all the tools and I can do voiceovers, I can do color corrections, I can do small animations. Um, I don't have to pay a ridiculous high amount for a non-updated version. Um, it can get updated by paying like $30 per month and mm -hmm. I really need to do more videos otherwise I'm just losing my money um, by paying the program that I don't use. 
but like I said, I've lost so much progress because of the the other program crashing all the time um, that it makes me really depressed hmm. I'm gonna cut the first part of the video over here because I don't want to risk it and lose all the progress that I made so far so stay tuned for part two I guess